Okay, Dickie, thank you very much for taking some time to, to talk to us this afternoon. You're, you're in London to um, attend the screening of your new film, Couple in a Hole. Yeah. Um, I've watched the film, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it took me a few moments to get into it and understand what was happening. Yeah. Can I ask you, when you received the, the, the script initially, what were your first thoughts on the script? I really liked the script because I just thought, I think if you felt grief yourself and you've understood, like I was, I was saying earlier on, I remember when I lost, I think it was my mum, and I remember being at the window and absolutely being furious. I couldn't understand why the world was just walking on by, going by the business, and I just thought, why is the world not stopped for me? This sh everyone should stop. So when I read that, they read the script and I saw like what's happened to Karen and the way her life has just stopped and the way it's become so small, I just, I just felt that it completely made sense. So I really liked the script and I met up with Tom to audition for it and um, a lot of the things we first talked about was her physicality because she's got agoraphobia and she's got an issue with walking and things like that. So we discussed a lot of things like that. So I just found it, I just felt I kind of knew this woman and I really, but she was a, like a very extreme version of anyone I'd ever met. But I just think grief can do that to you, you know, and it made sense to me. You mentioned agoraphobia there. Your, your character Karen in the film was, uh, was agoraphobic. Before you uh, began filming, did you do any research at all on agoraphobia, or was it something which you you knew about and understood? And well, I, I, I do. I mean, I, I did read up on it and stuff, but for me, I didn't really think about the agoraphobia. Agoraphobia. What I concentrated on was her grief for her son, and from that, that was a byproduct. So I didn't. I didn't want to kind of go down like oh she's at because the agoraphobia was too linked in with grief and to do with about not wanting contact with people and stuff so it kind of for me explained itself if that makes sense mm -hmm. at all um I, I really understood her absolutely not wanting to have that human interaction anymore I understand that before the film began, um, you had to do some preparation for the film, you and Paul. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they wanted certain body types, mm -hmm. etc. Um, and then you go to France and you start filming, and then within three or four days, uh, sadly, Paul broke, broke his, his ankle, ankle. Uh, and everything suspended. Yeah. Um, how did that? Did that cause you any problems in having to maintain? Um... Well, yeah. Well, we basically what became was going to be a sort of maintaining a very lean weight for five weeks, turn into five months, mm -hmm. because we started the process with the nutritionist in February, and then we didn't finish shoot until July. Yeah. So, and I did. Um, then when Paul broke his ankle, I went away and did The Witch, another movie. Um, in Canada, but luckily she was also starving the mother because they were they were living they were very poor and stuff. So it was just quite a long time of maintaining a really low weight. But I tell you, I was the healthiest I've ever been because I didn't have my my crisp and my chocolate and all those issues and and all that. So although you were eating very little, I felt so healthy because it was such a clean like really clean diet so I, I, I would love to say I've kept up no I haven't I'm back in my crisps and my chocolate and all that but I really enjoyed that cleanness it's the amount of energy no sugar slumps no uh, yeah it was fascinating before we before we, we finish tonight I'll make sure I get a copy of the diet sheet off you uh, and I'll come in handy for me. You'd have to, no, you just have to sort of like double or triple your portion. Yeah. And I remember emailing the nutritionist, he was so lovely, and I loved that. And I'd managed to stop taking milk and everything. What's the replacement for sugar? You know, because I love my sugar, and I just got back 
no replacement. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think my wife would agree to, to, to go and live in the woods to, to let me live somewhere. But, but we'll, I'll put it to her, see how she reacts. It's kind of extreme way of doing it. Um, you had worked with uh, Paul before, uh, yes, many years ago, uh, on did. Red Road. Uh -huh. um, I read somewhere when he was uh, speaking about yourself, he said that it was nice to work with Kate again because I understand her style. How would you describe your style? Oh gosh, see, um, chaotic and not having a clue what I'm doing, no, I don't know, um, I don't know what my style is, I might ask Paul tonight when I see him. Um, Some actresses would never um, consider putting themselves in the, in the position of that character, Karen. Um, the film opens and within five minutes we've got you eating insects and grubs and things like that. Um, you're scratching your, your fingers on the bark um, and you're basically living in a cave or the yeah. root of a, the bottom of a tree for, yeah. for several yeah. weeks. There's some actresses I just couldn't see that, but you seem to be, you seem to, to look for a challenge in, in many of your roles. Would that, is that something when a script comes through, do you say to yourself, this is a challenge or it's not challenging enough? Or, yeah, or yeah, what, what's your criteria? Well, I'm just interested in human behaviour and what seems to interest me, I'm realising as the years go past, is, is behaviour that maybe isn't necessarily popular, likeable, understandable. Um, I, I'm interested in what makes people the people they are now, you know, if you meet someone who's very unlikable in real life, tend to think, why are they like that? Why are they unhappy? What's make So I just find that fascinating anyway. So it does seem to be, and actually I feel as an actor, for a joy to get given roles that push you, and that's what I wanted to become an actor for, um, to really get pushed to extremes, to be scared, to, to get to really step out of your shoes and step into someone who's completely different. Um, I've no interest, I don't care what I look like on screen or, or whether my nails are broken or my hair sticking up or I, I wear makeup or it just doesn't interest. What interests me is doing my job as best I can and giving the character the best voice they deserve. And um, I think um, that for me is a challenge and I feel lucky because I've ended up managing, you know, not managing, I don't mean managing to get, but. I just somehow have ended up playing characters that are quite mm. difficult and and bare and laid open and, and complicated and I just feel really lucky to have had mm. those chances. Mm. I know the film you, you started off on location in the, in the Pyrenees when eventually you, you, you started filming and then you came back to, to the UK yeah. to, to complete the, the filming. Um, for the first in the in the finished product for the first seventy minutes, um, the only character you had to bounce off of was was uh, was John was Pop was Paul. Yeah. Uh, did that cause any not friction? But was it difficult for the two of you not having anybody else, or certainly for you not having another character to relate to until seventy minutes when suddenly um, Jerome uh, arrived on the scene for a brief second. Uh, no, I find that great. I'm very lucky because Paul is amazing, like seriously amazing actor. And he taught me, not as in he's going to teach me, but I literally watch everyone I work with all the time. Mm -hmm. I just enjoy and just watching the way he is, works so in the moment, much more than me. I fret about, oh, I've got this coming up and I need to be like that. And he just is like, no, you just react to he was amazing, so I felt really lucky to get him all to myself. Um, and I also didn't know what happened in the script because I made a decision not to, well, I read the script obviously in the beginning, but I made a decision not to read what happened when he went off from the hole. So I generally was in the dark when he went off from the hole. I had no idea whether he was got I knew that he had a relationship with the farmer and I knew they were in it and I remembered from months before reading it stuff went on but I couldn't remember I didn't read any drafts so he was going off and I genuinely didn't know where he was going and stuff so 
I, it was just a kind of normality then because I didn't, it's not like I'm thinking, oh, oh and him and Jerome had got that scene and they're talking about that, oh, and that's when that happens. I didn't know it was happening. Mm -hmm. So um, I just felt lucky to be sharing all that time with Paul, such a great actor mm -hmm. and someone so real and truthful and, you know, never does anything just for an effect ever ever he's such an honest actor so it was a joy <laughs> as joyful as that situation could be, could be. We'll, 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 we won't give too much away no, we'll, let, we'll, let, we'll let the public enjoy enjoy the film yeah. um we you have another two projects um uh, being screened at the london film festival Festival, The Witch, mm -hmm. uh, which I haven't seen sadly, I will make a point of seeing that, but also The Operator, yeah. uh, which is a short film, which is lovely, and we've just seen you on, on television um, in the three-part Midwinter oh, yes. of, of The Spirit, yes. uh, which again took me a moment or two to, to get into, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but eventually I enjoyed it and, oh, and it cool. ended this week. What else have you got uh, in the future over the next 12 months? What's, um, what's coming up? What have we got? Well, I'm working on, an, uh, right, let me think, let me think this, this out. I've got um, another drama coming out soon. I think it comes out in October or November called The Frankenstein Chronicles. And it's a really wonderful um, TV drama. It's got Sean Bean, it's got Anna Maxwell Martin, oh, it's got a really fantastic cast. I'm not going to try and list everyone because that's where I, I miss people out, but basically it's a f brilliant, brilliant drama. So the Frankenstein Chronicles comes out. I'm also working on a TV drama just now called One of Us, which is a thriller, and it's directed by Will McGregor, who directed Paul Dark. Mm. So I'm working on that up in Scotland, so I'm getting to work. I'm getting to go home at night and stuff, so that's quite exciting. Um, and then I think this comes out in the spring and The Witch comes out in February, mm -hmm. so just busy with them. So. Mm -hmm. Just want one or two questions finally to, to wrap up, Kate. Um, you, as you indicated, you, you live up in Scotland. Um, does that cause a problem to you in, in terms of, sort of um, tra having to travel down to, to get um, work down south? Or do you find that uh, um, you're in a position where you're happy where you live and you're happy your work-life balance yeah, regarding the well, films. I, I, it, it was a deliberate choice to stay there. I mean, we looked we looked into moving down to London quite a few times. And apart from cost and stuff, I've got a daughter who's a, mm. about to start high school and it just started to become a bit of a logistical nightmare. Mm -hmm. Whereas I find Glasgow's such a brilliant city. It's small, it's got a good, good, um, a good size is great to bring up kids and I just, I don't always work in London, I work in different countries and stuff, so for me Glasgow's a really good base and Celtic, I know you're a fellow Celtic supporter, Celtic are based in Glasgow, so why would I live somewhere else? I'll of course need to edit that part of this, <laughs> this, this, this movie for, 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 for my colleagues on the other side. Uh, you can keep it for yourself. <laughs> do you do you get <coughs> do, you, do you go out and see many films when you're at home uh, as a family or on your own? Do you do, do you watch yourself on television? Do you go <laughs> see films? Well, to, I, no, I don't watch myself. No, that's that's the equivalent of drawing like nails down a blackboard. But I do love seeing films. I see a lot of kids' films. Just now, because when I'm at home, I'm mum, so I go to movies with my daughter. Um, but yes, whenever I can see films, I'll, I'll get to see them. So ones that I can manage, like I can't get to GFT, the film theatre a lot in Glasgow, because the movies don't start to the afternoon, and then I've got my three o'clock cut off because of my daughter. But um, I've got my Cine World Pass, and I go when I can, and yeah, I see whatever I can. Like my favourite film, I think, in the last year would be, and it's either Ida, Ida, I don't know how you pronounce it, Paul Paoleski movie. <sighs> if, you, if you haven't seen it, oh, go and see it, it's amazing. So I like, I like um, independent, I go and see a lot of independent mm -hmm. movies as well, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. But you wouldn't turn down a blockbuster if another, no. if another Prometheus came on the scene. No, you would definitely not. And I think I think um, I don't just do like I'm not like oh I do and I I just I like scripts and it depends on the writing and who's directing and stuff mm. like that. So I'm very open minded. Yeah. You mentioned your daughter. Is it, do we have another budding actress on the uh, horizon? Um. Well, she, 
I don't know. She, the, at the moment, she wants either work with wolves or be a magician. But she has been in a couple of movies with me when she was younger. And she actually just sang in a film made by the video artist Phil Collins that was made for the Commonwealth Games. So she might be a reluctant performer, but she's very shy, whereas when I was young, I was a real exhibitionist. So we'd be different in that way, so I don't know. I know, I've met a few girls who school play who are also <laughs> exhibitionists, but that's a different matter. I think it's maybe just in our genes then. <laughs> Kate, it's been a pleasure. Oh, enjoy your pleasure. trip, set, enjoy your time in London, you. and enjoy the, the, the screening tomorrow Thank night. You. Thank you very much. Thanks, too. Thank you.